<laughs> hey, good morning. This video is for people that look at waves like that and say, I'd like to go swimming in there, but I'm kind of intimidated, so I don't. We're gonna share with you enough tips in this video to help you swim in conditions like this, believe it or not. Now, we're not professing to be experts. Yeah, Karen. But we are in these waves swimming and body surfing about five days a week. So we think we can help you by sharing enough tips that the next time you see conditions like this behind us, you'll be able to jump in the water, swim and have a good time. Because once you know how to navigate waves like this, it's refreshing and it's super fun. Woo. If you'd like to take it to the next level, be sure to watch our how to body surf conditions like this. You'll be able to find that here on our channel. We're Air and Lori Miller. The channel is plan free. We're hanging out here in Puerto Escondido, Mexico for about six months. If you'd like to know how the heck we can do things like hang out wherever we want for six months, in addition to being geographically independent since we were 35 and 37, you can check out our sister channel, Plan Free Finance and Abundance to see what we did, some of the things and techniques we rearranged in our lives financially to become free like this. Anytime you're doing a how-to video that has some risks involved, we're gonna start with some disclaimers. First one is, you should be at least a moderate intermediate swimmer to be swimming in conditions like these. The second disclaimer is, we're not your mommy. So enter and exit at your own risk. This time of year here, the rip currents aren't particularly big, long, or strong, but you should have at least basic knowledge on what to do if you find yourself in a rip current before you apply the tips that we're gonna share with you today. Another disclaimer that we wanna offer is to never turn your back on the ocean for more than a second or two. Good tip. And finally, there is always a chance of injury or even worse, even when you follow all of these things, perfectly. All right, enough of the disclaimers, on to the fun stuff. Let's talk about wave size and time of year that we're talking about. The conditions that we are describing today are present between when we arrived about mid-November and currently about mid-March. In this time, we have experienced wave sizes ranging from one meter to about three meters. The waves behind us for reference that you see today are around 2.4 to 2.6 meters. We estimate that once you see waves in excess of about 3.5 meters, you might do well to choose other more calm beaches in the area here of Puerto Escondido. We have beach walk videos of practically every beach in and around this town. You can see them on our channel to get an idea of which beaches will be more calm for you in big wave situations. Before you head down to the beach, we recommend you do yourself a favor and take a second looking at things like tide tables, wind charts, wave height, etc. Lori and I have been using a site called magicseaweed.com to gather all this information. If there are people out there watching this video that are using other websites to gather this stuff, go ahead and add it in the comment section below so that others can use that information also. The waves that we are talking about swimming in in this video are Playa Bococho, like you see us at today, uh, and also Playa Zicatella, but on either side of it. So where Playa Principal turns into Playa Zicatella, and on the other side where Zicatella turns into La Punta, the waves will be similar to what you see here. If you find yourself in the middle of Playa Zicatella, we encourage you not to enter those waves unless you are a very experienced and strong swimmer. The waves in the middle of that beach can get huge. Mm -hmm. On the other end of the scale, if you'd like waves smaller than this or you just want to hold down a lounge chair, you might want to consider Playa's Carrizalillo, Manzanillo, Corral, Angelito, etc. All right, let's talk about reading the waves and when to get in the water. Oftentimes, you'll look at the waves, they'll be rather tranquil and you'll think, this is easy peasy, I don't need a video on how to do this. If you're lucky enough, you'll enter when there isn't a set and it'll be rather tranquil and things will go pretty smoothly for you at this time. However, frequently enough, and the reason why we made this video is there'll be groups of waves that are much larger than normal come in 
called sets. They'll usually come in in waves of three or four, groups of three or four, but up to eight. And these are the waves that you want to watch out for and where these tips will be most applicable for you. Safety first. That's right. <laughs> so it's for the reason of the bigger set waves that we recommend before you just jump up from your sunbathing and run as fast as you can into the water. We recommend and encourage you to take a minute or two and observe what's going on in the ocean. If you look behind you and you see basically smaller waves, you're probably going to be able to enter without too much of a problem. What you want to do though is, in addition to looking at the first wave, you want to look two, three, four waves behind because if they're considerably bigger, it means there's a set coming. And now you've got a decision to make. And that decision consists of running through the crunch zone, which we'll explain more in a bit, or holding back and waiting on the beach until that set is over. If you're getting value from this video, help us out with the YouTube algorithm by clicking the like button. Also click subscribe and the blue bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming out. Add yourself to the comment section below. These are the things that the YouTube algorithm likes and it helps support our channel for free. Thank you. All right, once you've decided you're going in the ocean, let's talk about where to be and where not to be. In simple terms, if you're standing on the sand, or you're out in the blue water, those are your friendly zones. Any water that's white, bubbly, with sand churning in it is what we referred to as that crunch zone earlier. And your job is going to be, once you decide to enter the water, to get through that crunch zone as quickly as possible and to the other side. Once you get to the other side where the water's blue, it's like floating around in a kiddie pool out there. It's like floating around in a kiddie pool out here. Especially in between sets. When a set of waves comes in, that white crunch zone expands because the waves are larger. And you'll need to make adjustments accordingly. If you're out in the ocean and a wave set comes, that usually means adjusting your position further out because they'll break sooner. Which means you're gonna need to learn how to duck dive in, into and below the waves to be able to maintain your position in them and for your safety. Sets are the funnest time though now that you have the knowledge on how to navigate them and you'll enjoy them the most. At times when you're floating around out there and a bigger set of waves comes in, they might be strong enough to either pull you off your feet or you may find yourself in a rip current. It's at this time that you want to use your basic knowledge of how to navigate a rip current to slowly and calmly swim yourself out of that rip current and back into the tranquil waters that you're now safe in. All right, so you're super refreshed now and you might want to return to your sunbathing. You want to know and let's talk about how to get out or exit the water. We're going to share with you here tips on how to make that easier and safer for you. The first tip is very similar to the one we offered when it's time to get into the water, except it's in reverse. Does anyone remember what that tip is? That tip is take a few minutes and observe what's behind you or in this case in front of you because you never turn your back to the ocean. So you want to look at not just the first wave but you want to look three and four waves behind you because take it from my experience and a few cracked bones that you don't want to be exiting the ocean when there's a set coming. You might think you can beat it to the beach but you won't be able to and it will catch you and most likely smash you. What you want to do when it comes time to get out is you want to wait until there isn't a set either on you or approaching you. This will make your life much easier and more enjoyable. The second tip also applies when you're getting in or out of the ocean and that is never turn your back on it for more than one or two seconds. Especially when you're going to exit the ocean, you're naturally turning your back on it. But we just want to encourage you to always be aware of what's coming behind you. We've seen more than our fair share of people having fun giggling with their back to the ocean and the next thing you know, their head over heels, total yard sale wiped out. That's not gonna happen to you though because now you know how to deal with it. We're Air and Lori Miller and this is Plan Free. We hope that these tips will give you the confidence that you need to be able to swim in conditions like this. We know you can do it. We recommend that you watch this video next on how to body surf conditions like this. Also, like we mentioned before, there's lots of beach walk videos that you can see on our channel. We'll see you again soon in the next one. Until then, have fun 
Stay safe. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.